In this Friday Functions video, I'm supplementing Carlos's blog with a quick tip on how to set default values in your people columns to the current user's manager. Now, I'm also going to link you off to the blog that Carlos did this week, which is awesome, that speaks to you in general about how to set default values for complex fields in, Power, in SharePoint. And so, I really loved his blog a lot and just wanted to extend it one more level. So in this case, what I have added is the Office 365 users. Now, this is slightly different from what Carlos did because Carlos, Carlos just used the user function, which doesn't require any connector. But in order to get the manager's name, you do need the profile properties. And so in that case, I'm going to, I have added the Office 365 users connector so that I could get profile properties. So once I've done that, I want to go to the card of the form that I will be using for the manager. And if it is not unlocked, I need to unlock it in the advanced panel and then select the field itself. And what we're going to change of this field is the default value. Now, I have copied and pasted kind of a template for this. And so this template is not complete. It's just my template. In many cases, I will keep templates in my OneNote. And that way, when I need them, I can just copy and paste them into Power Apps. Just be aware that when you're copying and pasting from somewhere like Word, or places that have HTML formatting, your quotes may end up being curly. Curly quotes will not work here. So you would replace any curly quotation marks with straight quotations marks. So just make sure your quotation marks look like mine. They're nice and straight up and down. If they have any swagger to them and they start looking kind of wavy, then replace them with straight quotation marks. All right, so I'm in the default value of the person control or the people control, and I am checking first. So I'm using a condition that says if the form mode is form mode new, then we need to do this. And the reason is because if this is an edit form, then we don't want to change the value of that field. We want to keep the parent default. So this is the else statement here, right? If it's not in form mode new, then just give us back what's in the SharePoint list today. But if it's a form mode new, then I want you to set these two default values. And yes, we have two to set. Even though this is a single people column, a people column needs two things in order to update. It needs the display name and a claim. We do have connectors that will return the full claim, but in this case, I'm actually going to use a fixed text uh, string right here, which you will see in the blog that I will send you, and then I will add what's needed. But this is my template. So right after display name, I'm going to get the display name of the manager from the Office 365 users connection. So I'm gonna start by typing Office, 365 users, I have my cap lock on, and then I want the manager, right, so I choose manager. Whenever you see like a V2 or a V whatever, just pick the highest V, you know, so if it's V2, if you see V3, go ahead and pick V3, whatever the highest number is, I'm going to pick, that's the most recent version. I, I assume that we don't replace the original version so that we don't break your existing apps. Um, and I don't know how long that will go on, but just pick the highest version. And now what it always wants in the middle here is the email of the person. So I can just use user function, just like uh, Carlos did, and pass the email property into it. The last thing it wants, it always wants a dot after that to say, what do you want me to give you back? And since I'm trying to get the display name, I'm going to go ahead and choose that the display name. In this case, I'm going to get the display name of the manager. Okay. Now in the second line, I'm going to copy that whole thing because we're going to reuse it. And I'm going to paste that after the and sign. 
And instead of display name at the end, I'm just going to do mail, okay, which is the email address, because the claims is a concatenation of this fixed text string right here and the email of the manager which we got using the Office 365 Managers V2, right? Remember that any of these Office 365 users things, they usually want an ID of the user, which can be the user principal name or email ID. It says it right here in the syntax above. So it's easy to get the email, just like Carlos did in his blog, using user and then dot email which tells us what's the email of the person looking at the screen, the current user. And then once we pass that property, we have access to all of their profile properties, such as display name, right? And that's what we need to fill in on that first line. On the second line, we are adding to the claims prefix, the email address of the user's manager. And again, in order to get anything, we have to start by passing the user email into the manager method, and then we can do dot and get the email. Once we've done all of that, um, and we make sure we close our parens and everything, at that point, we're just going to close that paren and then close this. And now if I scroll down on this screen, which is way too zoomed, Right, let's zoom down. You'll see that my manager's name is now in there. So that's how easy it is to like default a feel to the user's manager. Um, and I thought you might find that helpful. Now, as far as getting to the blog, um, I'll give you the link to the blog in the description below. I added a button to it below here. So I'm just going to click on launch blog so that I can show you the blog. It's called Defining Default Values for Complex SharePoint Types in Forms. And, and this is a really great blog. It talks about a lot more than I talked about.